On Sunday, 8th May 2023, tragedy struck near Dilampe, Chennai, when a lorry collided with a bike taxi carrying a 34-year-old woman as a pillion rider, resulting in her unfortunate demise. The deceased, Sevika, was on her way to her parents' house to seek their blessings for her birthday. After celebrating her birthday the previous night at a friend's house in Tinagar at around 4.30 a.m. on Sunday, Sevika booked a bike taxi driven by S. Anandan to return home. The bike driver did not provide her with a helmet. While they were travelling on Anna Salai, a lorry collided with the bike. The impact of the collision flung both Sevika and Anandan off the bike. Sevika sustained severe head injuries, which proved fatal. Anandan, who was wearing a helmet, escaped with minor injuries. This stark contrast between the fates of Sevika and Anandan is yet again a grim reminder of the potential consequences of the failure to use proper safety equipment such as helmets and seat belts while driving or riding a vehicle. In 2021 alone, the non-usage of helmets led to over 30% of the total road crash fatalities, amounting to more than 46,000 deaths. When seated on a two-wheeler as a driver or a pillion rider, a helmet is the single most important safety equipment that one may use. Helmets act as a vital protective barrier and significantly reduce the chances of life-threatening head injuries in the event of a road crash. Keeping this in mind, it is of utmost importance that both riders and pillion passengers prioritize their safety by consistently wearing helmets while adhering to traffic regulations for a safe commute. Welcome to Mindstorms, the Save Life podcast with me, Karthik Nagarajan. This is a show where we discuss various aspects of road safety with the aim of ultimately working towards safer roads and a safer India. I'm your host, Karthik Nagarajan, and today we are joined on the show by Mr. Kishore Kumar Poludasu, MD and CEO of the SBI General Insurance Company Limited, a seasoned BFSI professional with over three decades of experience in commercial banking, including large corporate infrastructure credit, international banking operations, enterprise management, mergers and consolidation, among other things. Mr. Polidasu has been associated with the State Bank of India since 1991. He holds a bachelor's degree in commerce, along with the PGEMP and CAIIB. As the head of a major insurance company, Mr. Polidasu is best placed to provide the industry perspective on risky behaviors by people with regard to their safety on roads. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kotek. I want to ask you, you know, uh, road safety is a, is a grave topic of concern. I mean, at times, last year alone, you know, we lost over 1.5 lakh people to road crashes. Right? And, uh, you know, when I was looking at this number, I was thinking this is probably a population of, you know, many small countries, right, which we lose every year. Uh, in your opinion, where do you think the core of the problem lies? Kotek, when we look into the road accidents and the number of mortalities which are happening due to the road accidents, I will refer to your date, two data points which was released by MORTH and second one is by the World Bank. So as per the reports of MORTH, almost 400 to 450 fatality in the road accidents are happening in India every day and the Indian mortalities through the road accidents accounts for around 11% of the global accident deaths. This is as per the world report. So when we look at these percentages and the numbers, uh, we do understand that there is a lot of things to be done in India, both in terms of the driving behavior as well as the improvements in the infrastructure facilities, which can control the accidents in a better manner for the drivers. So when we talk about the infrastructure, road infrastructure, maybe in terms of the designing of the roads or designing of the road dividers and providing the appropriate driving paths across the roads. So these are the uh, three things which all the stakeholders has to take care so that the drivers on the road will get a better visibility of the roads with appropriate signages. 
so that will partially reduce the uh, potential risks which can arise out of the accidents and second and foremost important point will be the behavior of the drivers mm. the drivers behavior both in terms of uh, sometimes uh, intentional overruling of the traffic rules and maybe the drunken driving is one more thing what we frequently see which is leading to the accidents and this kind of behavioral aspects also to be controlled in india especially so that people will be more known and more aware about the adversaries which will come out of this reckless behavior rather we can put it in that words so through the awareness campaigns people will be able to know about the repercussions which are being arised out of their behavioral patterns for their own family as well as the other pedestrians who are moving on the roads so these are the two broad categories mm. where uh, we ha- we feel that uh, that is causing this high percentages at the global level for indian uh, road accidents yeah. i completely agree i think uh, you mentioned about reckless uh, behavior uh, i'm assuming you know uh, from a pure layman's perspective right my assessment is also that uh, sometimes we feel that okay this risk is not that much and I'm, i'm only driving from here to there it's only 10 minutes i'm only crossing this road right I, i'm also assuming that our, our ability to estimate the risk is also fairly fairly low and that is also a reason uh, for this would, would you agree sir absolutely absolutely and especially we look at the youngsters the college going mm. kids who are having the valid driving licenses be after becoming majors we see the tendency of uh, venture venturing to the high risk zones yeah. the high speeding of the vehicles beyond the city uh, speed limits and other one is the helmetless driving of the two wheelers yeah. the people will feel enjoyed by not wearing the helmets exposing their themselves to the air so that that kind of uh, uh, the acts which are not proper for the uh, road safety mechanism uh, those should be avoided and we have the stakeholder involvement across the segment be it in terms of the corporate campaigns what we do in collaboration with the educational institutions colleges and also conducting various uh, informatory sessions in the public forums i think those should be able to reduce the road accidents by bringing out the appropriate uh, risk culture among the people that's where we see uh, every stakeholder has to contribute and uh, being a, a entity involved in the general insurance segment we do understand our responsibility in terms of uh, avoiding such kind of accidents the prevention is better than cure there is the uh, uh, ideology what we follow so we do engage with a lot of stakeholders in bringing out the importance of uh, road safety mechanism save life foundation is one of the foundation where uh, we have been engaging with apart from other stakeholders under our corporate social responsibility obligations i i love the phrase you yeah. said which is uh, appropriate risk culture right the proper risk yeah. culture i think i think that is what is required uh, to be imparted as a lesson is moving on to another narrative sir behavior change plays a crucial role in ensuring safer roads and reducing the number of road crashes by promoting responsible actions such as following traffic rules wearing helmets and avoiding distractions while driving we can create a culture of road safety like sir just mentioned However, the daunting question remains: How can we achieve such a significant behavioral change on a massive scale? The WHO lists uh, five main risk factors concerning road safety, and most of these are behavioral issues. Right? Absolutely. Um, what can we do to sort of uh, make an individual change their behavior? What can we we do, especially on those five things that uh, the WHO lists? What do you think we can do? Oh, no no if we if we want to reiterate the five aspects what who has brought in as the behavioral risk factors the first one is the speeding by the drivers over speeding 
and second one is the drunken driving and the third one is uh, non usage of seat belts as a safety mechanism and fourth one is the children safety locks uh, generally people avoid using uh, that things and the final one is the usage of helmets these are the five uh, aspects what world health organization has brought out in their reports and in terms of bringing out the culture of awareness of these five factors we have been engaging uh, with various stakeholders i think that each and every corporate citizen as well as the normal citizens uh, are having that responsibility of uh, educating their neighbors and the common man towards for the betterment of the society and if we want to recount uh, the uh, mean speed if you take an average mean speed every 1% of the mean speed increase is uh, resulting into almost 4 to 5% of the uh, road accidents wow so the speedy effect of 1% increase in the mean speed is resulting in that kind of uh, uh, high high impact on the adverse uh, results in kind of road accidents so definitely uh, that deserves the attention of each and uh, every stakeholder in that and when we look at the child uh, safety mechanism in plants i think once a person uses appropriate manner of this child lock system uh, almost we can reduce the child deaths in the road accident by around 60% that's what uh, the general and members what we can see and other part and most important is uh, the driver education and the training programs hmm. uh, that's where we can collaborate with the stakeholders and how to bring out the appropriate uh, driving behaviors by incentivizing the right driving behavior that's where we see the potential in collaborating with the uh, traffic police departments uh, and other ngos who are engaged in the social service so that we will be able to appropriately incentivize the proper mannered driving behaviors across the roads uh, one example i can quote is the uh, driving without the helmets we have seen the cases where the ngos and other stakeholders collaboration by stopping the people who are not wearing the helmets on the road and explaining them about the requirements and even in some cases uh, wherever we see the poor people who are unable to purchase the proper helmets with their own resources even under the corporate social responsibility the helmets are being distributed even the oh. government traffic police also involved in this so uh, as any corporate i think 2% of their average profits they have to spend on these corporate social uh, initiatives the, those corpus of funds will come handy for serving to such type of causes which will benefit the society in a broader manner and we also engaged in uh, road safety make uh, road safety initiatives apart from uh, uh, health care initiatives what we do in the so corporate social responsibility and also taking care of the esg related activities so out of the okay. three pieces esg related activities climate related health and uh, uh, traffic uh, related issues i think traffic related things occupies a decently major share in our spend under the corporate social responsibility so under that we have we have been associated in uh, mumbai pune expressway and pune satara way where we collaborate and uh, imp- make the improvements in the road infrastructure so that the fatalities and accidents will get reduced to a maximum extent wonderful uh, these are some some great initiatives sir and uh, i i'm still you know remembering the line you started this with yeah. with every 1% increase in speed uh, results in such a big yeah. uh, impact 5% I, increase I, in fatalities know, yes this is an extraordinary statistic right uh, i have one one question though you know you mentioned driver behavior and uh, yeah you know i used to live uh, outside india especially in the, in the united states for many years and one of the things that is very common there is um, they have this test called as the defensive driving test um, you know where you know you, you take this test you understand the rules uh, you take this effort on your own to do that 
and there are many different benefits from taking that test you know eventually um, it's an online test but when you take that test eventually even sometimes your insurance premium comes down your auto insurance premium comes down right do you feel like in india uh, we are a market where you know those kind of behavior changes can can be brought in absolutely kartik i think uh, we are uh, better fit towards that kind of initiatives some of the initiatives are already started by the general insurance industry some of the insurance policies have been come with pay as you use the vehicle the moment person yeah. takes out the vehicle on road the clock for the insurance will trigger and the premium is appropriately calculated so that the amount of premium which is payable by the insurer will get reduced and chargeable only when the vehicle is being used on the road so okay. that that kind of initiatives have already come into india and insurance players are uh, giving such kind of covers to the drivers and apart from that uh, the engagement with the stakeholders in terms of uh, Uh, tra- giving the appropriate trainings is already been in place in India for quite long, sir. Long time. You mentioned various initiatives, sir, and uh, and even in, uh, in the previous question when you were talking, also you mentioned about how you are talking to students as as a group and talking to them about risk culture and all of that. Are there any you know given the uh, kind of fatalities we have, the kind of people it affect? Are there any specific target groups you know that you choose for these trainings? absolutely correct i think uh, we have to tackle the issues when they are young rather the people who are young young, young children so that's where we feel that uh, the collaboration with the educational institutions and colleges and schools these are the three categories where we, we engage with the institutions and uh, go there and give the presentations in collaboration with the traffic uh, police and explain to the children about the mannerisms what they have to follow on the road even in terms of pedestrian pedestrian uh, uh, mannerisms and the way the vehicles movements and a little bit of information on the traffic signage so that at the young age they could able to sense the importance of these issues and whenever they move on the road at least they could able to see the signage and understand what does it mean and appropriately they can imbibe that kind of uh, information so that once they grow up and become majors start driving the vehicles with appropriate licenses they will be able to better understand and appreciate and follow in toto in spirit of the regulations and statutes in the country that's where we are engaging with the schools education institution colleges and other part where we engage is the corporate uh, agencies and government agencies Uh, i think there uh, the mo- mostly uh, the initiatives will come in terms of uh, doing the public uh, forum interactions so that on a mass scale how do we reemphasize the importance of uh, adopting proper driving cultures and following the traffic rules and also entertaining and engaging with the stakeholders associated with these organizations so that they in turn will help to others so that we can broadly we can increase the scale of people who are engaged in such kind of initiatives so that as a nation we will be able to achieve the macro perspective and macro aspirations of the country so that we will be able to move up in the global uh, rankings in terms of the lower accidents and lower accidental fatalities uh, one more area with what we can see is that uh, the kind of uh, the infrastructure development what is happening in india by building up the national highways and roadways and under the smart city projects so we do understand that though the number of vehicles traffic is increasing on the roads parallelly the infrastructure and widening of the roads is also going up the, the person once he sees a four lane road or six lane road there is a general human temptation to increase the accelerator and speeding up on the road and how to keep that control aspects in one uh, person's driving behavior though there is a open road and uh, there is no hindrance ahead of him how to be within the permitted uh, speed limits uh, that's where uh, the people have to understand and keep on reminding the family bondage with them so that uh, 
reaching home is safely is more important than reaching home quickly uh, the concept what we wanted to bring among the stakeholders and that's a, it's actually a good segue to the to the next narrative how can we effectively engage people and provide them with the necessary information and practices to prioritize road safety and prevent road crashes what strategies campaigns or initiatives can be implemented to ensure widespread awareness and active participation in promoting safe driving habits um so my my question to you is you spoke about the moment when you hit the six lane highway there is a temptation to go right i uh, i spend most of my work life in advertising and uh, a lot of the times the challenge that we have is in how do you change the behavior of people right i i realize that's a very uh, very difficult one to do because with a lot of training one gets the knowledge but that still is not a guarantee that they will it will change behavior right people can probably tell you all the road safety rules are there but their behavior might not change in your vast experience Uh, what, in your opinion, is the biggest challenge to behavior change? Yeah. So any person, until and unless he feels that it is important for him in a personal perspective, he will not take it to the heart and follow it. So during our experiences, what we have seen is that until and unless we engage as a family to that individual person. the importance of uh, good driving habits will not get into their gene so that is one area where we have uh, made a point to conduct such kind of uh, informatory sessions and uh, good driving practice uh, initiatives at a family gathering kind of thing instead of uh, one to one solo individual interactions we do prefer when entire family is there husband wife and children so that this kind of inputs will uh, appropriately more intensely will have a deep rooted impact in the family as as a family instead of a individual interaction that one point i think it makes a majority difference in terms of uh, not only listening but practicing the traffic uh, related mannerisms and second one is the ngos where we believe that ngos is having that kind of uh, uh, power in terms of engaging with the women population in india we have a more number of uh, women related uh, ngos and some self help groups also there with the more human uh, women population so with engagement with that kind of organization self help groups and ngos having the women oriented and women membership styles uh, the association with them is giving a more positive results in terms of uh, enhancing the coverage of uh, the importance of traffic rules and traffic mannerisms so broadly these are the two pieces what we are working in terms of collaborating as a family and then improving the knowledge among the citizens i i love you know the answer that you had given uh, and especially you know engaging with the family uh, i'm assuming that changes uh, you know the way you're uh, taking in information entirely right uh, I, th- i think that's a, that's a very innovative sort of a move uh, i wanted to end by asking you um, what can private entities do you know when it comes to engaging people on road safety and helping avoid road crashes you mentioned a lot of initiatives you've taken as an organization but generally as a sector what do you think uh, the role of you know private enterprise can be yeah yeah so broadly i can categorize in a broad categories you know? the first one is the how to make better investments in public awareness campaigns be it uh, uh, print media or be it in the television media uh, so that it reaches appropriate uh, uh, end users that is one uh, public awareness campaign is what we are doing and the second one is as i submitted uh, already earlier the collaboration with the government agencies and uh, the ngos that is the second part where we see uh, it will give a larger benefit with uh, the expected uh, results and third one is how to utilize the technology in terms of uh, 
bringing this kind of information to the end users maybe the data driven solutions like uh, mobile apps and uh, telematics these do provide a real time feedback and uh, personalized in insights into the people who are driving uh, even we have seen the most modern vehicles which are coming along with the digital futures in terms of uh, right starting from the driverless driving there is a more piece where uh, we may not talk about right now but uh, the insights what they give in terms of uh, giving the uh, cautionary notices by mm -hmm. way of uh, appropriate sensors being fit in the four wheelers so uh, that kind of signaling and uh, messages which will come through the digital initiatives will also help us in reducing the accidents uh, chances these are the three broad categories where uh, i feel it, it is working and it is it continues to work uh, towards the positive benefits to the segments i'm glad that technology is playing a significant role in this as well um uh, sir thank you so much for taking out the time and talking to us today uh, this has been a very insightful and eye opening conversation yeah thank you very much kartik and that brings us to the end of this episode of milestones the save life podcast my name is kartik nagarajan if you liked what you heard and feel that road safety deserves way more attention than it gets please do consider sharing this episode with your family and friends do also review us on whichever podcast app you listen to us on if you're watching this on youtube do leave a comment to let us know what you would like to see us cover next for more on all things road safety please visit save life foundation's website www.savelifefoundation.org or any of its social media pages on facebook twitter and instagram we'll see you in the next episode and in the meantime drive safe stay safe i v m <laughs>